Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the October 7th, 2019 Harupi Unified School District Board of Education meeting. Roll call, please. President Here. 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 Yes. Here. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask Mr. John Chavez, would you please lead us in the flag salute? And if I'd like to ask the audience to please remain standing after Mr. Chavez is done. At this moment, the board would like to hold a moment of silence for Mr. John Wheeler, retired administrator, who passed away on September 17th. Mr. Wheeler was employed from 1969 to 1999 as the director of math demonstration program at Mission Middle, business services supervisor at the Ed Center, assistant principal at Hoopa Middle, and his last few years were spent as principal at Rustic Lane. Uh, John retired in 1999 after 30 years of service to JUSD. Thank you. Please be seated. At this time, I'd like to ask a special guest of ours tonight, Mr. John J. Chavez. He served as a trustee here in Harupa for 33 years. He's also a member of the Lions Club, a fellow member of uh, mine, and he'd like to say a few words about Mr. John Wheeler. <coughs> yes, <coughs> yes, I would like to say a few words about uh, John Wheeler. John Wheeler, I met him uh, when I first joined the uh, Lions Club way back when. That's a long time ago. And uh, <coughs> John was probably the most active person in the Lions Club with fundraisers. The uh, we did the uh, we initiated the uh, lunch with Santa. We uh, uh, we did a, a lot of fundraisers with the uh, with the rodeo, and he was always involved in it. He was the head man on this. Uh, that's when I first met him. Then I, uh, when he was principal at the um, at Rustic Lane, uh, one of the one of the other things that we did was uh, Flag Day. We used to give from the Lions Club. We used to select a grade in one or two schools and give them flags for Flag Day and give them the information that uh, what the stars and what the stripes uh, stood for. This is one of the things that, uh, that John was really involved in, uh, in, in doing community work plus being principal at, uh, at uh, Rustic Lane. One of the things at uh, Rustic Lane that, uh, that uh, I remember him uh, he used to tell me that there isn't uh, there isn't any b bad teachers. The teachers that would come in and and come out of uh, the college, they would they sometimes they would need help, a lot of help. And he would work with them. He would mentor them. And you know, would, at that time, he would find that some of these teachers that he helped were among the best teachers in the district after a few years. So don't give up on teachers. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I just wanted to let you know that John was quite a, quite a person in the community, quite a person as a principal, quite a person as, as, a, as a representative from the Harupa district. And, uh, and I would like, you know, many of you probably don't know John. He did retire a long time ago, and when he did, uh, he, he was uh, caravanning all through Mexico, and and, uh, and and he would come back and talk to us about uh, his adventures and what he had did. Uh, so we, the loss of John is pretty big because uh, he was one of the best uh, employees of the district during the time that I was in the school board anyway. So, um, you know, that's all I have to say about John. 
Thank you very much. Thank you for those words, Mr. Chavez. Okay, uh, reports from closed session, Mr. Brooks. Yes, sir. In closed session, by a unanimous 5-0 to zero vote, the board voted to accept the resignation agreement of employee number 267342. Thank you. Mr. Dabrowski? Sorry, thinking about John Wheeler and the lost. Hold on just a second here. Okay, my apologies. Um, by a 5 0 vote, the vote, the board unanimously offered to accept the agreement in special education case 20190511157. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, on number one, welcome 2019 uh, 2020 student board members. Mr. Dushan. Thank you, President Garcia. Well, we have, we'll, we'll let our, um, our permanent, I guess, one, Darius, would you uh, please tell us, or Darian, about Harupa Valley High School? <clears throat> um, good evening, everyone. It is officially October, which means pink out, Halloween, and fall activities are on their way to Harupa Valley High School. Volleyball is having their, their pink out game on October 14th, where it will be decked out with pink posters, decorations, and more. That will also be their senior night, so their last home game. Entry is $4, but free for students who have purchased an ASB card. The football pink out game is also on October 25th, which will also be pinked out. October 25th is also football senior night. Entry is $8, but free with students who have purchased their ASB card. And our sophomore class council is also selling tie-dye t-shirts for students to wear at the pink out events, and they're selling them for $8 each. Some info about theater is our JVHS improv team just had their first improv show on September 20th in the theater. Entry was $3. Theater is also having their fall play called Don't Tell the Secret that will give you quite the adrenaline rush. The show will be get going on for two days, Thursday, October 24th at 3 p.m. and Friday, October 25th at 6 p.m. It costs $5 for staff, alumni, and CETA school students, $7 pre-sale, and $8 at the door. Next, we have Fall Cabaret is also on the way with theater, choir, and band performing. It is on Thursday, October 17th in the gym for $5. Pie and coffee is included with the purchase. We recently had our first blood drive, which was on October 2nd. Ace, we did an incredible job promoting and advertising, and we got a total of 134 donators. ASB students had many different jobs to make sure the students had a great experience. We had a majority of students be hand holders so students can have someone to talk to and hold their hand during the donation process. Students also worked canteen where we give students snacks afterwards and the time where they can go back to class. ASB had a very fun and a successful blood drive. Recently on October 4th we had a home football game where we honored our fellow JAG football player Gabriel Nav Navarro. Gabriel Navarro has been in the hospital since last Sunday from a brain aneurysm. On Tuesday, doctors found out that he has leukemia. Our football game was decked out with orange balloons and chalk all over the pavement with things written such as number 47, his jersey number, hashtag Navarro strong, and hashtag prayers for Gabe. We encourage students to wear orange at the football game to show support for Gabriel Navarro. The football team and boosters sold hashtag Navarro strong t-shirts during lunch and at the football game for $10. Gabriel's mom is the head custodian at our school, Carolyn Navarro, and every dollar made went towards Gabe and his mom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dorian, and our, our best wishes, prayers for the Navarro family. I know that affected the school deeply. I was at the school on Friday, and everybody was in an orange. It was it was pretty moving, so thank you. And from Rubido tonight is um, Christian Torres. Good no. evening, district members. My name is Christian Torres, subbing for Jasmine Leva, and I'm the Rubido High School ASB president. I'll, I hope you all had a great beginning of this month and weekend. It has been a busy and significant month for Rubido High School. To start off, Rubido Senior Sunrise was a success. We had many seniors participate on not just the event itself, but coming at 4 in the morning to decorate the quad with their class color green. Moving on to homecoming. The theme for the rally and the dance was the wonderful world of Disney. 
Our homecoming rally this year was on a Thursday and the day after was our dance. We received many compliments on the rally from the students and staff. It truly was a magical rally. From the skit being phantasmic to there being a boys dancing performance, recognizing students who have passed their AP tests and CASP tests, and simply trying, to, trying different things to make everyone's homecoming memorable. The different spirit days we had throughout the week were college wear, Disney wear, Hawaiian wear, class colors, and school colors. We also had a guest that Disney song game during lunch where we invited the school to come sing along and dance as others are participating in the game. The homecoming game was exciting with many students and parents supporting our varsity players, as well as having the homecoming candidate halftime show to help with their campaigning and creating a runway for them on the football field to recognize them. We had many candidates for each class with the most being eight girls running for senior homecoming queen and two boys running for homecoming king. For all these different events, Rubido ratified the no-go list, which had a big wake-up call to all the students to encourage them to remain off it, where it did increase. We, had a, we then had our Cash for College night on Thursday, October 1st, and had several students and their parents show up to get information and guides to start the FAFSA and Cal State application process. Lastly, we are very proud to say that our girls' tennis team is as now of in first place and before Thursday, our football team was tied first. An, an up upcoming event we have this week is our choir concert October 9th at the Herpa Valley High School starting at 7 o'clock and our pink out game, our pink out football game. That is all I have for you today. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. I've got to take a step back here. Uh, I skipped a line in the agenda, the inspirational comment. So I apologize to my colleague, Ms. Ortega, if you would please deliver that for us. Of course, thank you. Um, and it's a Mayan-inspired poem by Luis Valdez uh, in 1971, and it's titled, In La Quiche. I am you or you are me. Tu eres mi otro yo, you are my other me. Si te hago daño a ti, if I do harm to you, me hago daño a mí mismo. I do harm to myself. Si te amo y respeto, if I love and respect you, me amo y respeto yo. I love and respect myself. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. Okay, on to number two, recognition. First one, 2A, best of the best, Mrs. Hernandez. President Garcia, trustees, and Mr. Duchon, it's an honor to present to you the best of the best honorees and honorable mentions for August and September of 2019. The committee took many nominations from around the district, and it's with great pleasure that I share our best of the best with you tonight. I will ask each of them to come forward as I call their names. Our first recipient is Jim Boyd. Would you mind standing right here? Thank you. Jim is a heating and AC mechanic for Harupa Unified. Mr. Boyd's flexibility, forward thinking, and innovation stand out to all who know him and work with him. His dedication has produced nearly 1,000 work orders and projects completed. Mr. Boyd has been in the forefront with creating a new database for our mechanical equipment. He is a consistent and reliable technician that serves all students and staff. Thank you, Jim, for all that you do for Harupa. Our next recipient is Anthony Rosales. Anthony Rosales is a computer support assistant for Harupa. Mr. Rosales provides the best customer support each and every time, including the hundred times I call him a week. He consistently goes above and beyond to find a solution to any problem he's presented. Mr. Rosales has a calm demeanor and has tremendous patience as he quickly resolves the multiple issues he's faced with. Many colleagues praise Mr. Rosales for his willingness to help meet the needs of the students and staffs of Harupa. He is well liked and appreciated. We are happy to have him as part of the Harupa team. Thank you. 
Our next recipient um, is not here tonight, or he let me know he would not be here tonight. His name is Mr. Daniel Guzman. Mr. Guzman is a teacher at Rubido High School, and although he couldn't be here tonight, I'd still like to read his acknowledgments. Mr. Guzman has not only taught Spanish, but he also prepares students for the AP Spanish exam. Beyond the work he does in the classroom, he is the Spanish club advisor. He works hard to make sure that the club members are recognized and part of the cultural events. Mr. Guzman maintains a variety of leadership roles on campus, and he's a model teacher and mentor. Mr. Guzman is a pleasure to work with and an outstanding example of the best of the best. Please join me in a round of applause. Certificate. Anthony, do you have another certificate in the back of your? Sorry, I might have lost this next one. You have <laughs> Sorry, you felt. Sorry, uh, Anthony to the rescue again. That's right, Mr. Dushan. Thank you, Anthony. Yet again. Yet again. Whew, I'm glad I didn't leave that in the office. Our next recipient is Sherry Moore. <laughs> I would have made you a new one. Um, Sherry Moore is a special education teacher at, at Ina Arbuckle. Miss Moore makes sure every person feels extra special. She goes above and beyond in helping others with whatever their needs are. Miss Moore is supportive and positive. Miss Moore is an incredible teacher that focuses on students' potential and she creates a positive environment that is warm for all of her students. She creates that environment in order to empower all of the students to be the best that they can be. Miss Moore is certainly one of Harupa's finest and best, and we thank her for all she does. <laughs> Our next recipient is Allison Hessler. Allison Hessler is the assistant principal at Mission Middle School. Ms. Hessler shares her knowledge from years of teaching with her team and leads with compassion and enthusiasm. She works hard to create um, a positive culture that enables all learners to feel safe and welcome. Ms. Hessler has an encouraging attitude and has created a positive school environment. Thank you, Ms. Hessler, for being a vital part of the Harupa family. Our last but not least recipient is Anna Marie Montanez. Anna Marie Montanez is the principal of the Learning Center. Mrs. Montanez provides guidance and assistance at any time with her welcoming open door policy. Her priority has always been the students and staff and how she can provide support. Her genuine care and concern for the students and community shine through. She is encouraging and kind to everyone. Mrs. Montanez is a great example of a leader with her commitment and dedication to the Harupa community. Thank you, Mrs. Montanez, for being the best of the best. At this time, I'd like to recognize um, those employees selected for honorable mention. If you're here, please stand at your seat when I call your name. Nick Agria, uh, custodian at Stone Avenue. Tad Canali, locksmith. Barbara Dean, instructional aide at Pedley Elementary. Helen McMinn, student attendant aide at Ian Ina Arbuckle. <laughs> Yay, she's here. Jen Sanchez, secretary at the Parent Center. Chris Terrison, custodian of West Riverside. Jessica Esparza, teacher at Peralta. Yvonne Fuentes, school psychologist at, Mi school psychologist at Mission Middle. Amber Geldian, teacher at Rubido. Catherine Gonzalez, teacher at Camino Real. Matthew Lambert, teacher at Camino Real. Desiree Morse, at teacher at Harupa Valley. Rochelle Rowe, teacher at Harupa Middle. 
and James Syrup, school psychologist at Mariloma Middle, and Monica Montiel Turner, principal at Harupa Middle. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations to our all of our recipients. Thank you, Mrs. Hernandez, and congratulations to all the recipients. Uh, keep up the great work. All right, number 2B, recognize 2019-2020 funding for the 21st Century Community Learning Centers Program. Mr. Dubrovsky. Thank you. CDE recently notified us that funding for the 21st Century Community Learning Centers Program has been awarded again this year in the amount of $282,150. This will go towards augmenting the Think Together program at Granite Hill, Ina, Indian Hills, Rustic Lane, and Sunny Slope Elementary. Thank you, Mr. Dubrowski. Uh, 2C, recognize funding for Adult Education and Family Literacy Act. Mr. Dubrowski. Thank you. We were also recently notified that funding for the Adult Education and Family Literacy Act grant has been awarded, again, in the amount of $140,595, and that will supplement our fantastic Adult Ed program run by, of course, Dr. Montanez. Thank you. 2D, recognize 2019-2020 funding for after-school education and safety program. Mr. Dubrovsky. Thank you. We were also notified that funding for the After School Education and Safety Program, or ACES program, has been awarded in the amount of $2,225,579. This program will be conducted at 15 of our elementary schools, with one new addition being Sky Country Elementary this year. Thank you, Mr. Dubrovsky. And I just want to let my, my board colleagues know here that the City Council last week actually passed a resolution uh, kind of regarding this, so it's kind of good to hear that, that we have support from the city. So just wanted to mention that real quick. So on to the next item, uh, number three, board member comments. Ms. Ortega, start with you. Thank you, I'll be, I'll be uh, brief. Um, uh, speaking of the city, they, they held their state of the city um, last week and it was really nice to, to, to be there and um, it was here in the, uh, in the Patriot in Patriot High School and I was able to go for my uh, to attend for the first time and just again I always speak very highly of, of community I grew up in this community I, I'm recently coming back from um, from California Latino School Boards Association where I was reminded about um, uh, the stories of, of students how they struggle and I have the opportunity to share my story and how I got expelled from they, this same school district my freshman year and how life becomes comes full circle and now I get to serve as a school board member in the same district that I got expelled and just the faces of these students being able to share that to them that you know there's never a, a, a moment that doesn't go to waste um, that everything comes around and comes full circle and um, just me being there at the city I I, I kind of remembered all my childhood and all the way up to to um, college and now how me and a few other of, of, of the cohort that I graduated with are giving back to our community so I think I always speak that this community Harupa has um, that philanthropical spirit of giving back, of, of we going out, becoming leaders, and coming back and giving to our community. Um, I just I just had the honor to, to, to hear and to see that I haven't seen um, John Chavez, which is a, a, a mentor of mine and a lot of these students that, I, that I'm sharing you, that I'm sharing with you about, that you know we are in these positions of leadership and being able to give back because we saw them give back. So I think that's really important. And me be, coming back from, from a conference uh, just yesterday reminded me that we always have to speak of, yes, our struggles, but then what allowed us to, to be in, the, in these positions that we are in. And um, there was uh, one of the speakers there in the conference was a, a, a former uh, also board member um, who's now the assembly uh, member in, in the state, which is Jose Medina. And he was there and he was talking about how his children grew up in Ribido. 
and how I grew up in Robodo, and there was another uh, panelist who also grew up in Robodo, and we we're all in the same room, and I don't think um, it was a coincidence that we got to speak of, yes, the struggles again, but the adversity that children go through, and now how they're able to come back and, and give, and, and that's what I was reminded that that's what I'm here to do and to serve and do it genuinely from, from the heart. So um, again, I'm honored to be here and to be in community with you all. And um, I just wanted to also congratulate um, all the, the ones that were awarded today. And uh, Dr. Montañez, the, the, the day I met you, you, you wanted to hear about this community. And I just wanted to personally thank you for having that heart as well. And, and everybody who has the heart to do the work that is, is really worth it at the end of the, at the, end of the day. So um, thank you all for, for having me and for, um, for uh, being able to continue um, the the work that needs to be done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. Mrs. Bradford. I wish our students were still here to be able to tell them how proud I am of them coming and making the commitment to report their their school goings on, and I really want to go to their events. Um, Mr. Dubrovsky, I would like for you to extend to your staff my thanks, our thanks for the the, uh, the grants for the 20th Century Learning Center ACES and um, the, the adult education and family literacy. Um, I had lunch with the city council member Anthony Kelly uh, earlier this week and he talked about the resolution that the board, the, the city council passed uh, last Thursday about being collaborative with our school district. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it, for our, our children to see the kind of leadership that Ms. Ortega describes coming out of our own classrooms. Um, I, I also wanted to tell you about, you, you just see us up here on district business, but how we form our relationships within the community um, and, and how that works for the advantage of mutual understanding. For example, I was invited to, a, it's called the Sikh Project. Some people say Sikh, the Sikh religion, and, and like the Gurdwara that you see next to uh, Patriot High School. There was just a gorgeous display at the Museum of Tolerance in, in Los Angeles. Well, th they were talking about their persecution as a culture and a religion, and I, uh, in the discussion, I, I stood up and I said that before it was required by state law, our district in 2012 uh, met with the Sikh community and, and came to uh, an agreement about how their religious practices are observed. And this woman remembered us. Uh, of all the, all the places in California is one of the districts where she felt most welcome and received. Um, let's see, uh, I also want to tell you about, I participated in International Walk to School Day with uh, children and, and teachers from Mission uh, Middle, no, no, Mission Bell, and how beautifully cared for the children were. The, the little boys had their hair gelled and the little girls were just shiny and brushed hair and braids and, and big bows and it made me think how much love there is in those families and, and how much they value school to spend that kind of effort in, in sending their children off every day. Um, I also visited the School Readiness uh, Center. Well, we had a study session for the board uh, regarding uh, a possible bond measure. Um, let's see. Oh, I went to Food Fest where we raised money for scholarships for our students. Uh, the Women's Leadership uh, Conference that we were invited to by Supervisor Karen Spiegel. Um, I've, I'm a University of California certified master gardener, so I also helped on starting up the garden at um, Ina Arbuckle, and it's going to be gorgeous. And uh, also the Van Buren School. 
Um, I also uh, would like to end with talking about Nueva Vista High School. I went to visit, and these students are astounding in their eloquence. They gave me a copy of their art, uh, uh, short stories, poetry, photography, and drawings. And there is so much creativity at that school. And I saw the wonderful support of the teachers encouraging each young student to do whatever they personally needed to get through high school and, and with the encouragement and obvious love that uh, the, the staff stands behind them for those to achieve their goals. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bradford. Mrs. Chard. Um, well, I want to congratulate our best of the best. I know all of them are looking forward to possibly getting that prize at the end of the month or end of the year. Um, but they, we do appreciate all the work that you do. Even, even just this little appreciation doesn't seem like enough to the things that all of you have accomplished in your positions at your sites. Um, I also would like to congr uh, congratulate Mr. Dabrowski on um, being able to reach out and get those grants for those programs that are so valuable to this district. I know all of those are really needed and uh, we've been able to keep them going for several years. And in case you didn't calculate the amount that was over $3 million worth, almost $3 million worth of grants that helps supply needy. Um, the supplies keep, gives our children a place to go at the end of the day. Um, it just, there's a, it's just, it teaches our parents within the community, um, helps them with uh, becoming citizens. There's just so many different ways that those grant, that $3 million is spread out and uh, it's just a valuable thing. Um, I also attended the State of the City Address and thought it was quite quite interesting. Um, our mayor decided that he was going to show everyone the potential of our district, of our, of our city, by going out and actually working a day in the life of a person, an employee of uh, different parts of the city, the Harupa Unified School District. He went and served lunches um, at one of the schools. He um, helped the Harupa Community Services District um, with their sewer project, <laughs> and he got down and dirty with them. I mean, he really did participate and show us in, in shorts um, what we don't appreciate from our community as well as our teachers and our staff. I mean, we all talk here about that, but our community is still part of that that keeps us going. If the roads weren't taken care of, if we didn't have the water, if we didn't have um, a lot of the things that the community, the restaurants around for people to enjoy and stay in our community. Um, that's why it's so nice to have a working relationship. And Anthony Kelly was one of the students from Ina Arbuckle, and I remember him. And I, I never would have thought him as a child becoming a councilman. He just didn't seem like that was the field that he wanted to go in. He was a great student, but I just didn't think that it was something that he would want to do. And I'm proud to say that he has really turned out to be a great person and a great asset to the council. Um, on another note, um, I went to the CTE fall meeting, um, which is our um, uh, preparing our students to go out into the workforce. And we have two meetings a, a year, uh, one in the fall and then one in the spring. And they had, uh, Roberta Pace is in charge of this, and she um, gave out information as to what, what is being looked at by the state and by the nation. And in the year 2025, they anticipate that they will be down, now the percentage has escaped me, but we will be short um, medical technicians, we'll be short nurses, um, computer techs. There's a lot of fields that we're going to be short, short. And she said, our district is right on track with those needs. Um, we have something like 21, I think, different pathways. 22, 22 pathways, I believe. I can't remember it offhand. But all of these um, pathways were shared there, and they were they did table groups. And I was with the medical technician nursing group. Um, uh, Mrs. Regal went, and she was with another part of it. But the sher sheriffs were there. Um, all our different pathways were there, and they were talking. They brought a student, and then they were trying to figure out what is the best way to actually promote our students. And this is something that we as a district have to 
have to do. We have to figure out how we're going to get our students out into the workforce. We're doing our part in our classrooms, but it's not enough. We still have to get them out, and so we need ideas and ways to get them into the work field and, uh, and find out exactly what is needed and give them the best um, opportunity to find the right college. So our college and career days are very valuable to our students. Um, I also went to the Ruba Valley Food Fest, which was quite good again this year. We had a lot of different restaurants and the portions were enormous. It was just really, really great. The Diet Band was really good. And I think Mr. Garcia won a little bit of a 50-50. He was one of the winners of that, I think so. Um, but all that money goes through schol for scholarships for our um, for our students at all of our high schools. I participate by bidding on the uh, silent auction, and that's to my husband's dismay. I always come home with two or three baskets, so I'm, at least I feel like I'm donating. <laughs> but I do have something that I want to share with everyone that I think this is my own feeling. Um, it's something that we're going to vote on later tonight, and I know that sometimes this comes up. Um, and people have a different opinion from the, from the board. So I'm just going to read what I have written because it'll be easier than trying to say it. I'd like to make a comment before we vote on the last agenda on our item, on our last item on our agenda, which is for a 2% raise for our managers um, and the administrators at the, um, of all of our workforce in the district. I know sometimes people think assistant administrative secretaries, people working for the district, supervisor capacity, and clerical don't deserve a 2% raise. But personally, I feel they do deserve a raise because they, because in the years that I've been in the district, they were le looked over sometimes because they don't have a union that represents them. And the management need to have a raise just like everyone else. They have a family raise. They have, um, medical bills that they have to pay, they need to have the same thing. Um, I feel that when they're putting in the extra time to oversee projects, oversee schools, um, some of them work extra hours, they're on call on the weekends to come out and help. Um, if something happens at a site, they leave a family activity if they're on call. If there's an emergency, our assistant superintendents, all of these managers and the administrators have to show up. Someone is assigned to show up. And when you take that into consideration, most of us work an eight hour day, we go home to our families. They work an eight hour day, maybe go home to their families and spend an hour or two before the children go to bed, and maybe not. Maybe they don't even see their children until the weekend. And I think that it's something that they actually deserve. When they're, when we're, our managers are all taking care of 20,000 students, they're keeping the networking going for those classrooms so that all of the um, computers can work, all of the staff that's working, the paychecks that go out, all the time cards, all the printing that has to be done, all the phone calls. They keep everything working in this district, and I feel that they deserve a 2% raise. They probably deserve more. But um, I just feel that this is something that some people feel that they, they don't really deserve it because they're already getting a salary, but that's not true. They don't get extra for coming in. That, that's part of their salary. So if we can give them a raise of the least amount of 2%, I think that it's they're, they are well worth it because um, it's their passion that keeps them here. It's not the money. They're not staying here for the money. But I personally don't want any of them to leave for a measly 2%. So I, that's my comments and my feelings on that. We have the best staff. Whether we're paying the most for them or not, we have the best staff around. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Charge. For the record, Ms. Charge, I almost won some money. So. Oh, you almost, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Too, soon. Too soon. That's okay. It's, it's a great cause. It is a great cause. And um, uh, the Lions Club and the, and the Rotary did do so much for the district, for our students. So um, great, great show. Yes. Mrs. Regal. I have a question for you, Mr. Garcia. If you had won the money, would you have shared it with the board? Because we're a great cause, too. Uh, Mrs. Regal, your comments? <laughs> I'll take that you're thinking about it. OK. Um, 
Let me jump in. I, I don't want to repeat uh, my fellow trustees here. Um, I did attend many of the events. Um, I do want to highlight, I don't recall if I mentioned it last month, but um, September 11th, Patriot High School and uh, Mr. Green coordinated bringing the beam from the World Trade Center on site and they invited the community members. So they really uh, shared this through social media that people were welcome to come down and see this um, large beam that we were, a local fire department or union was able to obtain and they, they pride in sharing that because many of us would never have that opportunity to see it. So um, I wanna just give a shout out to Mr. Green of Patriot High School for being so considerate and sharing with the community to, uh, to view it. Um, Mr. Chavez, thank you for coming down and sharing you know, your experience in the history of Mr. Wheeler. And you know, it sounds like he was just a dynamic person all around and um, I didn't get the pleasure to meet him, but I, I'm glad you shared that and let's just hope that you know, his characteristics and his passion for our students, really that legacy continues on. It sounds like he was just, he, he was a wonderful man and the district was probably lucky to have him. So thank you for taking the time to come down here and share that with us. And then I also wanted to um, touch on with our student members. I know they always leave. We can never say anything. They run up that door <laughs> before we can say anything, but, um, Harupa Valley High School, the support for Gabriel Navarro is, is beyond moving um, for for a family to go through that and and the community to rally together to support him and as well as his mother's an employee of ours um, you know I just want to just send well wishes and and think positive thoughts and and hope for a positive recovery for him um, you know leukemia is, is shakes shakes the family and it shakes the community and um, it sounds like that he was really loved by many and, and um, for our students to be so considerate and you know chalk up the sidewalk and really rally together to support him is just um, so moving and, and thank you Herbert Valley High School for um, taking that initiative and really showing support. Um, sometimes we can't do anything we don't know what to do but they really um, that is quite moving. And then um, the FAFSA applications, I'm glad that we're showing uh, support uh, with getting all the students applying to that. Many students never realize what type of funding they can receive to go to college. So I, I'm glad that we continue to work those programs into our students and encourage them if they want to go to college, that there are opportunities and, and grants and scholarships available. Um, it, for a quiet week that I thought, or a month, um, just a few things, as I mentioned, I went to Patriot High School, as well as um, State of the City, uh, and attended the CTE special meeting, and then um, Food Fest, so that was a lot of fun. But I also wanna um, mention the, the best of the best. You know, I was listening to each, each little story that you shared with everybody that was recognized, Denise, and, and here are some words comes up with a solution, always supportive, encouraging, motivational, compassion, enthusiastic, positive, genuine and caring. These, these are the best of the best. And, and the honorable mentions, you're on here too because these are, these are characteristics that we have and, and I love that. That's what's gonna continue and this is what's also going to um, create a positive environment and, and our students are going to retrieve that and, and they're going to be more motivated. They're going, to, they're going to aspire to reach further and be inspired. So congratulations to all of you. And um, I think that's all I have for right now. Thank you, Mrs. Riegel. I just have a few things. So the Food Fest, people have mentioned that. I think uh, what I wanted to mention about it was uh, the support we get from uh, the school district, uh, maintenance operations, you know, the stage, uh, Mrs. Collins up here, uh, and also our student groups, uh, ASB, uh, Rupa Valley, Rupa High School, um, Air Force, uh, Junior ROTC, um, I'm probably missing a bunch of others. There's a Leo's Club at Rupa Valley that also helps. So without the student volunteers, you know, we're just a bunch of old guys and gals up there. And uh, without the kids, we really probably couldn't couldn't make it happen. So 
uh, thanks to all the students and their parents for, for their support. Uh, and again, thank you, Eli and John Chavez, Mr. Chavez, for coming out uh, and, and uh, you know, saying some words about John Wheeler, and Ms. Crocker for sharing that information. Uh, I didn't get to know or meet him. Maybe I met him once, but I didn't really know John. But from what I hear from uh, either teachers or Lions Club members, he was he was a really fantastic individual. So thanks again for coming out for that, Mr. Chavez. And uh, Mission Middle, I saw something on Facebook, uh, Ms. Hessler, on the sharing positive message out in the, I don't know, in the front of the street or something. I think it was really, really great uh, to see that. So thank you and the team out there. And finally, I had an opportunity last Friday to attend uh, 2020 census kickoff over here uh, at St. John near Rubido. And the Rubido High School band was there and the choir. And so it was an event put on by a, a former uh, Rubido High School graduate from 2012, Mariana Lopez. And um, it was, so they, she invited some folks to come up and speak. You know, how's the census going to affect cities, schools, communities? So it's really important for all of us to consider that um, it has to do with funding, and especially for education, uh, that we do an accurate count, and that the folks in Riverside County, especially in Harupa Valley, are properly and accurately counted. So um, please look into that and uh, get more info, and it's just very important that, uh, that we do this right. So that's all I have to share for today. Okay, moving on. I know the next one's up. Uh, public verbal comments. So I've got the one here from Miss Sylvia Olguin. Um, this presentation is going to be very harsh. Um, classified certificated are held accountable if they don't follow protocol and we do we follow it we dot our i's cross our t's make sure nobody's going to come after us however management is not hold or held to the same accountability um, my supervisor and i came here determined to say his name so that you would know who i'm speaking about but I'm going to have a little bit of class and not say it, but he will know who I'm talking about. He let me know he's been here at this position for 12 years. He shouldn't have been hired 12 years ago. He shouldn't still have that position because he has no knowledge of it. Um, my old supervisor, however, Ron Garcia, and I'm saying his name because I have permission to, if we needed help, he would give us the help. He would not call for someone to come in and give us help. He held us accountable, but he did it in a respectful manner. The supervisor we have now, I just don't feel that kissing up to somebody is a qualification to get a job, and that's how he got this job. Our administration can say what they want, but that's how he got this job. Um, Mr. Brooks sent him on a Friday following a board meeting that Monday and he was doing his job. Mr. Brooks was doing his job. And so was his supervisor up until the point when I explained how I didn't need the papers he took because I got to my site with plenty of time. And he stayed there for 10 minutes at which point I was saying, God, please leave him leave now because I don't know what I'm gonna do. He all but called me a liar, and as you know, nobody does that. Unless you have the proof that I am lying, or I don't know what I'm talking about, nobody does that. But he continued on and on. I understand Mr. Brooks sent him for a purpose, and Mr. Brooks should not take responsibility for his ignorance on staying there and continuing on and on. This is not the first time he's done things. You heard me do the presentation about my phone. People telling me I wasn't at work or it wasn't on when it was. 
but I had explained to my supervisor that the phones were switched with Ina Arbuckle. Well, I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of it. It's going to be done. Two years later, he decided to switch my phone from Camino Real and figured I was stupid and wouldn't investigate it. And when I did, it said, oh, Camino Real, not custodian. I wasn't at Camino Real. I was at Glen Elon South. But he tried to be sly and underhanded and try and tell me that for nine years I had the wrong phone number. No, it wasn't the wrong phone number. He's just an underhanded person who cannot be respectful and do his job properly. That is not the only thing. I took a picture and I sent him a text on a Friday of a, of a light that is very, very needed at Camino Real. Told him the light wasn't working. There is another custodian there that works there eight hours. That his safety is at risk. Two weeks later, the light got fixed. Okay, at Glen Avon South, I called him, told him that my chemical Super 60 was not coming out properly, it was coming out clear, which it normally comes out green. He comes down, and I, I clearly told him, if I have to go above MOT, I have no problem doing it. Oh no, so if you don't do that, I'm gonna get it done right away. Three weeks later, my chemicals started working. That's unacceptable. That is unacceptable anywhere in the district, but more so at a special needs school where these kids need to have high priority, which he didn't seem to think so. He has no kind of confidentiality. Ms. Logan, can I please ask you to wrap it up? Okay. So, I just don't understand how classified certificate are held accountable for what they do or don't do, yet management isn't. Thank you, Ms. Logan. Move on to the next one here, Griselda Jimenez. Good evening, member, member, board members, and all people present. I am speaking to you about my concern regarding Saturday school at Patriot High School, and with hopes that this is not happening in any other district, in, this, in, in any other site in the district. School safety, security, and education should be the utmost importance. It was not so this past Saturday, October 5th, at Patriot High School. First off, the school was not open to let the students on school grounds. There were, there were over 100 students waiting to get on site, but all the gates were locked on Camino Real. Students were then told to walk around towards Mission Avenue and enter through the auditorium. There were students at school for several reasons, one being Saturday school and the others were going on field trips and there was a bus waiting for students. This was unacceptable. The district should provide employees or an administrator to access the school grounds so students do not waste time outside the school grounds and that are safe during a school function. I dropped off my son around 8.15, right in front of the auditorium. I immediately forgot to tell him something, so I got off the car and I talked to him. I went to go talk to him, but he was nowhere to be found. I panicked and then I asked the teacher to show me the roster of students who were supposed to attend Saturday school. He responded, we cannot make students come to Saturday school. So there is no roster. There should be a roster of the qualified students to attend Saturday school or at least a no-go list because I think that's what they go by. To check to see if the students are attending. I continued to walk around the whole school grounds looking for my son. Still, I had not found him, so I returned and spoke to the teachers that were in charge and asked for the administrator on site in order for him to make an all call for him and, uh, on the PA system. He stated that there was no administrator on site. There should always be an administrator on site. There should always be an administrator if there's a school function. 
If there's a dance, there's an administrator. If there's a game, there's an administrator. If there's Saturday school, there should be an administrator. I continued looking for my son. I observed student, students walking around and not really doing anything, not doing any work or not doing anything productive or actually structured. There should be structured to a Saturday school, not only study hall, but have activities, have activities to, that are built into the day, like school beautification or like an enrichment activity that students are engaged in. The school district should hire qualified teachers to conduct Saturday school and motivate students to attend. I realize that this Saturday school is to make up attendance. However, students are not motivated to come. After two hours of walking around and driving around the school, I found my son on the soccer field. He did get consequences for his actions, but what actions will the board take today to ensure that all schools, not only Patriot, in the school district that are, that are providing Saturday school, provide a safe environment, provide a structured program, and also an administrator at every site during Saturday school. I speak not for only my son, but I speak for all the students attending this program. How effective, how effective is the Saturday school program? I ask myself, and I ask you. Thank Ms. you. Jimenez, I'm going to ask Mr. Duchon to at least give me a, he's, he has updated the board a little sure. bit on this, so if you can please address Well, that. we just found out about this this afternoon, so we are in the process of investigating it. If you leave your name with Mr. Dabrowski, we'll get back with Actually, you. Actually, I did speak to the assistant principal. She was nice enough after I spoke to Ms. Uh, Ms. Collins. Um, I actually did speak to, since I didn't, couldn't get a hold of a principal today, I did actually speak to, um, I believe it's Mrs. Miller. And she actually told me she was going to take um, actions to improve this. I mean, I know that uh, I think it was it was just an action that was just it just needs revising. I mean, there was just, the teachers are not adequate. They couldn't answer my questions. It was just, you know, I was very disappointed. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Ms. Ms. Uh, Jimenez, I think if you could let Mr. Jabrowski, he can give you an update when the time comes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Thank you. All right. Next one I have here is Ms. Judy Dillard. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I am with Daughters of the American Revolution here in Riverside. We were chartered 114 years ago in Riverside. And I have been trying for the last eight years to get Harupa School District involved in the programs we have, and I'm not having much luck. <laughs> Camino Real is fantastic. At Camino Real, we do Constitution Week with them. They do the ringing of the bells. I, we participate in their colonial day that Mrs. Bain runs for fifth graders. We've donated a brand new set of all of the books on the missions in the state of California to the school library. Something else we've done, we were responsible for the butterfly garden at Ruby Doe Library. And then Mr. Kevin, Roten. I always mess up his name. We sponsored him for DAR State Teacher of the Year and he did win with the DAR State Teacher of the Year a few years ago but I can't get anybody to participate in the essay contest that we do um, and then we have an eighth grade awards we do and I sent letters <laughs> this past year to all of the middle schools in Harupa with the forms and the teachers picked these students I never heard from one of them I did 10 Riverside middle schools they get certificates they get a medal they can wear but there's just so much that DAR even offers scholarships but we can't get into the school district so we can let the students know, hey, we have scholarships. 
and whoops, um, our essay contest this year it's too late for him. We had one of our members worked here at the district. I tried for five or six years and had no luck and she's, I work the district office, let me see what I can do. She retired this year. <laughs> so we lost our out, our in there, but it's, we did have one student from Camino Real two years in a row. She entered our American History Essay Contest and she went as far as the state level and did get beat out, but I saw her at Riverside History Day. She's still pushing history and winning awards. So there is a benefit there and I dropped everything. <laughs> but our, in, our essay contest, fifth through eighth grade, they always do a different subject. And hers was, you were a child in Europe in the 1700s, your family wants to come to the United States. Please write an essay, so many words, what it was like for you to have to leave your home country, what it was like on the sea voyage coming over, and they give them research references that they can follow. The ninth to 12th grade, they always do something with Christopher Columbus. And this year it was, you're on the ship with Christopher Columbus, describe the navigation and the sailing systems. And I mean, it's just educational. And I can't find any help to get in. I've brought all this information to the district office for years and help. <laughs> well, and, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Dillard, certainly understand your frustration. It's getting harder and harder, I think, uh, not just for your organization, but for the Lions Club, American Leeds in it. And so um, I'm not sure if Mr. Tabrowski might have some ideas on how we can kind of help promote these things. We can certainly send them out to schools and to the right grade levels, I think, of like fifth grade and the history curriculum. Um, but like you mentioned, Mr. Garcia, there's there's the American Legion essay contest, the Lions Club essay contest, the VFW does some contests. There there are a lot of things out there. Um, and, I, and I know our teachers feel the crunch of getting everything done, but um, perhaps if it comes through my office, we might be able to get it in the hands of some more people that might be willing to participate. Because I have some stuff I printed out that we use. And um, I've been active at Camino Real for 28 years now. <laughs> I had to stop and think. I had two grandsons go there. My children didn't go there. They were grown when I moved here. Yeah, those are the challenges that we see, I think, with groups. We always have to have someone inside. And I know as board members, I think we we also do uh, pass those things on, so we'll, we'll do... Camino Real uses me for uh, Colonial Day for Cat in the Cradle, because young mothers don't know how to do Cat in the Cradle with the yarn in your hands. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. I volunteered one year and I can't get out of it now. <laughs> um, but some of our other members go with me now. Are, are, you, were you, are you connected with the Daughters of... Uh, um, Gold, uh, the Golden West, did it used to be called, or is it, has it always it's, been the Daughters? That's totally separate. Okay. Well, I belong to Daughters of American Revolution, okay. I belong to Daughters of Union Veterans, okay. and I'm processing for Colonial Dames and War of 1812 right now. Well, my son's a teacher in the district, and he won from the Daughters of the Golden West, but I know that he would like to, he would probably try and promote that, even though he's a high school teacher. Um, we, he, we do elementary, middle school, and high school. If Mr. Dabrowski can get it, get a copy of that to me, then I'll try and get it to some of the schools that I represent too and kind of talk it up a little bit because I know that uh, the Civil War reenactment was just recently down at the um, Jensen Alvarado Ranch and I went there for that and talked to some of them and they want to get into the classrooms too and they have some great programs so maybe I can help work with that um, and see if I can get a committee going and okay, maybe I'll give him all of these and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll pull up the um, history teacher. Okay. Now on the eighth grade awards we do, one is for outstanding work in American history. Teachers nominate them. Yeah, and we have And the other students. one is good citizen. Mm -hmm. Teachers nominate them. We give them a certificate and a medal. 
on a ribbon that they can wear. So, okay, I personally would like to help you get that out. So I'll try and get with Mr. Broski and okay, thank the you. information. What do you have? And I'll get the history teacher requirements out. And okay. I know Mr. Roten was thrilled to death when he got it. I don't know if anybody was in a round. Well, in, in high it. school, there's different phases, and then the elementary schools, they're all in different grades, have their different set levels of the study. So we can try and promote that back out now. There's a lot there. Thank you again. Thank you, Ms. Dillard. Appreciate it. All right, next one I have here is Ms. Wendy Eccles. I wanted to give her the opportunity association. Ma'am? I'm also a U.S. history teacher. I haven't seen that yet, but I would love to send that out to the members of the union. So I'll okay, get your information from Mr. Dabrowski. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, how are you tonight? Nice to see you too. Yes, I too am a daughter of the American Revolution. I just have not registered for it yet. Five, I had five ancestors who fought in the war. Um, so good evening, trustees, Superintendent Deshaun, cabinet, and everyone else. Um, tonight's message is a little bit different than what I've shared before. It's about time. Although our secondary teachers really appreciate the 45 minutes of protective time that has been given on late start days with the pending ratification of our tentative agreement, there is still not nearly enough time to do all the things required within our members' workday. Excessive grading, lesson planning, meetings, including grade level, department, impact team, staff, SSTs, IEPs, and I can continue to go on, more paperwork than ever, professional development, plus the sub plans for those days, and so much more. So much time is spent on these activities, our members feel like they don't have time to do their best work, to connect with students, to coach them, to guide them, to properly teach them. Our members are beyond exhausted. Members are feeling that if they are not working to exhaustion, they are not viewed as working hard enough. This is not okay. This does not create an optimal teaching or learning environment. We should be looking at things differently. Not having so many things on already overflowing platters. Focusing on what is working and how to better implement those things. I've seen the schedules of many of our members and my head was spinning just looking at them. As we spend our time working together as the association, administration, and the board of trustees, I would ask that we look at the time it takes to implement the many mandates that are being placed upon all staff in our district. And hopefully we can come up with solutions that will allow our students to be better served by dedicating our time to what's most important, them. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Eccles. All right, next one here. Jacqueline Mesa. Good evening. Oh, thank you. Good evening, President Garcia, members of the board, Superintendent Duchon and cabinet. My name is Jacqueline Mesa and I am a quality assurance coach for Think Together, the nonprofit provider of after school programs here in Harupa. First, um, thank you for your support and the opportunity to bring our after school and expanded learning programs to the children and families in Harupa. It is a special honor to be a part of your learning community and we are thrilled that we can support Harupa's children and help them grow to become productive and young citizens and leaders in this community. On October 23rd, Theme Together is taking part in a nationwide celebration called Lights On After School to showcase after school programs and the importance of these um, roles, these programs uh, and what they play in the lives of children, families and communities. 
Today, Think Together delivers an after-school program that not only provides a safe place for children to go after school, but also provides homework help and academic support, healthy snacks, physical activity, and opportunities to explore new innovative subjects like robotics and coding. I am here today to cordially invite you to experience the power of after school by attending our Think Together Lights On After School Open House on October 23rd at 3 p.m. at Stone Avenue um, Elementary. We encourage you to join the children, parents, staff, and community members who, whose lives are impacted by after school programs. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you on October 23rd. Thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. <clears throat> thank you, Jacqueline. Mr. Deshaun. And uh, Ms. Mesla, I just would like to thank you and all of the workers with Think Together. We, it is a, um, I was gonna say an arm of the district, but seems like so much more because we serve the same children. You carry out many of the programs as a continuum of what you do. You provide a safe environment for our students who need to have supervision and they get much more than that. So thank you so much. Sure. I, is, is it Mesa? Okay, Ms. Mesa. Um, I met uh, some of the Think Together uh, uh, staff at Peralta and they were so entirely cool. I thought, I wanna go back to elementary school. So at Stone Avenue, are you going to have uh, staff from the various locations or just Stone Avenues? Okay. And, and I assume they're equally cool. Yes. Encouraging and motivating. There will be events happening at all of the sites. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if you can't make it to Stone Avenue, you can always go to Peralta. Well, you know, if you, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So thank you for inviting us. All right. Moving on to number five. Administrative reports and written communications, uh, 5A. Review approval of 2019-2020 local control and accountability plan and the 2019-2020 adopted budget. Mrs. Ford. The Riverside County Office of Education has notified the district that it's 2019-2020 local control accountability plan and its <coughs> corresponding 2019-2020 adopted budget have been approved. Under LCFF regulations, the County Office of Education annually reviews the district's LCAP, Local Control Accountability Plan, to determine that, if, that it adheres to the State Board of Education adopted template, that the budget reflects sufficient expenditures to implement the actions and strategies that are included in the plan, and also that the plan adheres to the expenditure requirements for funds that are apportioned on the basis of the number of concentrated of number and concentration of unduplicated pupils. JUSD's adopted LCAP has been analyzed using these guidelines and is approved for the 2019-2020 fiscal year. And you have a copy of the letter from Riverside County Office of Education in your backup materials. Thank you, Mrs. Ford. Any questions, comments? Yes. Mrs. Bradford. I'm sorry, I forgot to say this while there were more people here, but I, as I read this letter from Dr. White, I thought it was absolutely spectacular in, in the areas where she says the district is to be commended for the focus. So I was wondering if you could just briefly enumerate that for, for those of who are still left here because, I mean, that's, it's spectacular. And thank you. I'd be happy to add that. Um, there were three areas in which we received commendations. The first one was under student success in English language arts and mathematics. And it reads that the district is to be commended for increasing CAS proficiency for the African American subgroup in both language arts and mathematics. Also, the district's continued systematic delivery of professional development, building capacity through increased use of impact teams and personalized learning opportunities is to be commended. And the district provides parent engagement activities related to increasing mathematics awareness. Uh, the second area was in course access and student enrollment and rigorous coursework and career technical education pathways. The district is to be commended for an increased focus on college and career preparation for homeless youth, foster youth, and students with disabilities, student groups, including a dual enrollment CTE pathway at Rupa Valley High School. And then the third area of commendation was under pupil engagement and school climate. 
and they write the district is to be commended for their focus on alternatives to suspension and expulsion through the implementation of student youth corps and the use of restorative practices. Further accommodations are warranted for meeting goals in relation to pupils, parents, and teachers' sense of school connectedness with regarding a, a welcoming environment, satisfaction with instruction, positive learning environment, and collaborative culture at school. Thank you. And Dr. Hansen, I imagine that uh, a synopsis of that will be in Mr. Schmelak's next uh, Horizons. Because this, I mean, this is so exciting. And thank you. I also want to just really quick give a shout out to Mrs. Marino, because as the one responsible for putting the LCAP, I'm sorry, Mrs. Shilton. Oh. Um, as the one responsible for putting the LCAP together, she does a fantastic job and it's always a high quality product. All right. Anything else? All right. 5B. Here report on summary of 2019-2020 inter-intra-district attendance permits. Mrs. Ford. Each year, administration provides a summary of the number and type of student transfer request. There were 831 students that were involved in the open enrollment transfers within the district's boundaries. Those are called intra-district transfers. And then a summary of the outgoing and incoming number of transfers by, <coughs> uh, by school is provided in your backup materials for those intra-district transfers. In addition to the intra-district, which are again within the district the interdistrict student transfers included 291 students transferring into the district from other districts and 460 transfers out of the districts out, out of the district those include renewals so we actually had a total of 40 students who transferred out of the district which is a significantly lower number than we had a few years ago before the board changed the requirements for transferring out of the district and uh, changed that criteria. So um, we're, we're happy to see that we're seeing a slow reduction or actually a pretty significant reduction in the number of transfers out of the district. Those were the new. Uh, so the inter-district transfers in and out of the district include, as I said, new and renewing transfers. So you'll see the numbers broken out there and a summary of those numbers are provided in your backup materials. Thank you, Mrs. Ford. Any questions or comments? Thank you. Keep the, the great work. Keep it here. All right, 5C, report on Saturday school program. Mr. Dabrowski. Thank you. As you're no doubt aware, the Saturday School Enrichment Program has been in effect for several years now. I want to say maybe seven to eight years. Um, it was originally designed to recoup lost average daily attendance um, gains from the state for absences and also to offer enrichments to students. It operates at all of our schools in, in grades 1 through 12. And last year it operated um, on eight different days, will again this year and a total of $505,580 in average daily attendance was recovered through the program. And then after the cost, the net uh, recouped ADA was $371,908. Mr. Dabrowski, do you know what the figure was if we had not have, what we would have lost had we not had this? It, that would be the $505,000 figure. Oh, it would just figure. be 500, mm -hmm. okay, all right. And then the money that we do we get back, does it go into a special, a certain fund, or do we spread it across the board? Let Mrs. So, Ford tell you that. So the funding just comes back into the general fund. Okay. So we're able to use that for unrestricted. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Bradford? What benefit do the students find in attending Saturday school? It, there's, there's a variety of benefits. The, each school develops their own programs. So the classes that are offered, the opportunities that students have depend on the school site and what teachers are interested in teaching and, and what can be offered. So um, the individual benefit for each student would depend on the class. In many classes, there are many schools, they offer classes like coding and computer, things that kids enjoy. Um, so it, it would be the, the engagement and the interest in the subject that is offered at each, in each program. 
do they have the opportunity to attend even if they don't need to make up requirements? Yes, we do take all students that are interested in coming, whether or not we're going to receive uh, daily, average daily attendance for an absence. Okay, it, it sounds like you might get some, some kids who are extra excited about the opportunities being presented. Absolutely. Good. Oh, and another potential benefit might be if a student perhaps was very close to having perfect attendance and was able to make up a day and that the, the policies of that school allowed them to make up that towards their perfect attendance. That sometimes is important to kids. All right, thank you, Mr. Dabrowski. Uh, 5D, publicized tentative agreement with CSEA RUPA 392, Mr. Brooks. So I'm very pleased tonight to share that a tentative agreement has been reached with CSEA Harupa 392 for the 2019-2020 school year. Highlights of that agreement include a 2% increase to the salary schedule, an ongoing increase to the health and welfare cap from $11,150 to $11,500, a one-time distribution of $2,200 from the classified health and welfare pool, an increase to their boot reimbursement from $80 to $150, an increase to the uniform allowance from $35 to $45, an, up, uh, an update to the contract language for campus supervisor uh, overtime rotation schedules. Um, as you know, the law requires that the district uh, disclose uh, all major provisions of a collective bargaining agreement at a public meeting prior to the final approval by the governing board, um, and that a copy should also be made for available for public inspection. Therefore, um, the tentative agreement is attached to the materials tonight. Additionally, uh, Riverside County Office of Education requires that we uh, provide a disclosure of information at least 10 days prior to any board action. Um, and that's also being taken care of tonight. And I'm sure you'll find that attached to the board materials. Um, fortunately, uh, CSCA Harupa 392 is scheduled to vote on their own ratification of this tentative agreement on October 9th, coming up this week. And you will be asked to take action on this on October 21st in our regularly scheduled board meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. All right, 5E, consider nominations for 2019 election of members to the Riverside County Committee on School District Organization. Mr. Dushan. Thank you, President Garcia. Um, first of all, I might point out that there is in your annotation a deadline of today to submit nominations. However, uh, um, Ms. Denise Collins did check with the county and they will accept nominations with the caveat that all nominations must be made from the floor and your representative is um, Trustee Bradford. So there is the weight on your shoulders should the board wish to nominate anyone. He should have gotten something from the county committee. Yeah, that you you, you you go to the election to elect people to serve on the county committee. Now, I will tell you that since the um, there are openings in the second, third, and fifth supervisorial districts. We are the second, and member, board members can serve. So you could nominate anyone from this uh, board, including yourself. So with that, uh, we'll leave it up to the board if you wish to nominate people to any of those seats, including the um, second district. But are you saying I have to make the nomination? Yes. If you are not there, no, only another member from another board who is the designee to go to that meeting. So the, the nomination deadline is today, but Ms. Bradford could go actually on the floor and make a nomination. I, I believe under the law, yeah. well, first of all, those nominations have to be made from the floor mm -hmm. and they can't not accept them at that time. Okay, so uh, shall we discuss this and all run around in the front then? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no the board, would determine if they wish to make any nominations. Oh. You don't have to run around anywhere. Wait, you, wait, you said from the floor. I'm oh, no. from the floor. I'm sorry, from the floor at the at the election meeting, which happens at the joint school board's meeting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Does the board wish to nominate anyone? I still nominate Mrs. Bradford to do that. Why did you do that? Because your name's already there. <laughs> 
And you're a great speaker. And you have the flair to get on the floor and announce <laughs> that you would like to nominate someone. I'm not, I think you should Is just this nominate a backhanded yourself. compliment? <laughs> what, would you like to know what members of the school district organization do? Okay. Um, uh, so the school district organization committee is an 11 member committee, two from each of the supervisorial district, one at large member, and they um, mediate transfers of territory, not students, territory from one district to another, as well as applications or petitions, generally they're a petition, for unifications or other reorganization of districts. Um, it comes in various forms, but generally it's transfer of one territory to another or a unification of a district. They are very active in times when a district wishes to unify. For example, there are four districts that are not unified, well, five, including the high school district, not unified in this county. Uh, also, from time to time, there is a transfer, sometimes from citizens of one district that feel like it's more to their community interest to, bo to be in another district. The committee operates under the scope of the law. There are several um, criteria that they have to evaluate a um, petition by. Sometimes they meet almost no times during the year. Other times they may meet many times. Sometimes transfers are non-controversial. Sometimes they are the biggest news in the county. Okay, I, I read this, but I wasn't taking it personally at the time. Uh, do you feel it's something that's important for our district to be represented? Yes. Do you think it would be a good learning experience for me? <laughs> I once served as the designated secretary to the county committee. I would call it way beyond a learning experience. It is definitely a full-fledged experience. It just depends on what's brought before the committee. Okay. Um, so there, the amount of time involved may or may not be. Okay. All right. Well, hey, why not? Just to clarify, so Mrs. Bradford is already she's, a member. She's no, a voting member. She's a member of the committee to, to elect, elect members, members okay. to the committee. That's why I make sure. Okay. This is very confusing. It is every year. I think that's why Mrs. Bradford has yeah, been so confusing gone every year. That, yeah. yeah. That one had been sprung on me last year, too. Yeah. We so, anointed you because you're special. You anointed me. You know, you're very, um, you know, we just felt like you, you could really do a good job at it. And, um, and the more confusing part is that uh, it, 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 with terms expiring 2019 for Memo Mendez. So I don't know how, why he's on here. Well, because his term on the committee, he you don't have to be a board member so he probably continued unless he resigned from that committee which i assume he did not but there's no qualification to be a board member you have to be i believe a voting resident a citizen in one of the supervisorial districts so it does not have to be one of you necessarily um, for many years mr david Kaysen served as a representative of the second supervisorial district on the committee. Okay. Mrs. Bedford, I just think you have a very good flair about discussing and if things got down to where they had to do some talking, you're very well versed on a lot of things and I think you would be a good nominee. Thank you. You've sat on several committees before. I agree. Within the city yeah. or county. Yes. And, and you're deeply um, vested with the, I mean, from U the UCR um, master, you know, and I mean on the board and having sat on some other committees, I think that you are, you stay up on things and I think you're just a, a good candidate. Okay, thank you. So we have consensus, Ms. Bradford, sure. nom nominate herself and. This is, this is for your turn. I think it may be two years. Um, Two year it's two-year term. I always say I'll try anything once so long as it doesn't hurt too badly. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bradford. All right. 5F, uh, other administrative reports and written communications. Mr. Deshaun. There are none. All right. Thank you very much. I'd like to ask the board to refresh your screens before we get on to the action session.
All right, item A, approve and adopt routine action items by consent. So moved. Motion by Ms. Ortega. Second. Second by Mrs. Chard. Let's call for the vote, please. All right, that motion passes 5-0. Oh. Item B, approved personnel matters. A B1, ratify a tentative agreement between NEA, NEA Harupa and Harupa Unified School District. Mr. Brooks. As you'll recall at our September 9th meeting, uh, it was publicized that a tentative agreement has been reached with NEA Harupa for the 2019-2020 school year. Um, just to briefly review the major provisions of that agreement, it's a 2% salary increase, an increase to the health and welfare contribution to $11,500. Contract language for late start at the secondary levels, which includes 45 minutes of additional teacher planning and preparation time. Um, extra compensation for 504 meetings when they go beyond 120 minutes in a month. Updates for release time for special education teachers, updates for class sizes for SDC and secondary pullout classes, and caseload limits of 23 for all secondary special education uh, teachers. Um, as discussed previously for our other agreement tonight, um, the district is required to disclose uh, both to the county and to the public the major provisions of our collective bargaining agreement as well as its cost for the county. That was all accomplished in our last board meeting, but those uh, items are also included here as backup materials. Uh, fortunately, NEA Harupa has already ratified this agreement on September 20th by a vote of their members, and tonight administration is recommending that the board ratify the tentative agreement between NEA Harupa and the Harupa Unified School District. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. So moved. Motion by Ms. Ortega. Second. second by Ms. Bradford. I have a question. Ms. Regal. Um, with Ms. Eccles coming up and talking about the time, I know that we've gotten this far on the agreement. I mean, is there a concern of some ways to ease their, their time of um, whatever it takes to complete so that they can spend more time in the classroom? I mean, I know we're, we're at the 11th hour here, but if Wendy's coming in and addressing this concern of some of the teachers being concerned of being able to, to do what they do is educate in trying to complete everything, is there already something that's been considered or that is in the works? Well, as, as a part of this agreement, as I, as I just reviewed, uh, there are a couple of items that address uh, time for our, our teachers, individual planning time for one, 45 minutes at the secondary level. That's already a part of the collective bargaining agreement for teachers at the elementary level. They have 45 minutes each Wednesday, and in this case, our secondary teachers will have 45 minutes every Thursday. It's individual discretion over that time. Additionally, special education teachers who have to prepare for IEPs, that kind of thing, they have 10 days of release time each year. And uh, through this agreement, they have some additional discretion for when that time is scheduled. Um, I would also add that um, it, w monthly, we have contract management and contract maintenance meetings um, with NEA Harupa and their leadership, Ms. Eccles, um, as well as their bargaining chairperson, um, and a couple of other leaders from their organization come and meet with um, actually Mr. Dabrowski and myself, and we talk through issues such as time and the things that are required of teachers. Okay, thank you. I just know that, I mean, in our modern day workforce, I mean, believe me, there is even in my own job as a director that I'm having to do a lot at night, but I get it. And spending more time in the classroom in front of the students should be priority number one. 
And so I just want to make sure that that's something that stays fresh in our minds that we don't forget. I mean, I know that we all mean well and whether something's coming from the top of the state or at the county or even at the, the district level it is to be considerate of their time because I, I would rather see them spend more time in front of the students than worrying about completing the task and paperwork and things like that. All right, thank you. Let's call for the vote, please. Motion passes, 5-0. B2, approved compensation package for certificated administrators, classified management, and confidential employees. Mr. Brooks. So tonight, administration is recommending the approval of a compensation package for our certificated administrators, classified managers, and confidential employees. Uh, in this case, that compensation package is a 2% salary increase and a health and welfare contribution increase to $11,500. And just to clarify one piece that I could imagine being confusing, um, this is for certificated administrators, classified managers, and confidential employees. It does not include cabinet members. Move to approve. Motion by Ms. Chard. A second. Second by Mrs. Regal. Any other questions or comments? All right, let's call for the vote, please. Motion passes, 5-0. And final item, item. Uh, item C, board member committee reports or additional comments. Mrs. Regal. Thank you, President Garcia. Um, a couple um, community things that will be taking place. Um, next week we are resuming the um, Norco College President Advisory Meeting. And um, I will always say this, I would love to see Ms. Pace if she has the time to come with me because it's so valuable, especially because they talk about the dual enrollment. And then um, in a couple weeks, I have been invited to the Peralta Fall Festival. I will be judging costumes on our students um, that attend. And then tomorrow, um, I will be attending the SoCal Fair. Um, I, we're going to have some of our FFA members down there from Rubido High School and, and Herb Valley. And uh, tomorrow they're going to be displaying the goats and the sheeps. Um, if anybody knows, I love those goats. They're so cute this year. And, you know, I just always say I love those kids. And then in addition to all that, I um, wanted to give a shout out Austin Church. He's from Rubido High School. He sends us this letter. I think everybody received it. Um, showing what he has raised this year and um, invites us down to the fairs but um, looking at his lamb and his his pig they look pretty large and, and he was trying to gain have one of them gain like 20 pounds in a week is that what he says in this letter Wow 20 pounds in a week um, anyway so it just even publicly the SoCal fair is taking place and we have our students that are participating at the FFA so um, I encourage um, our our employees and families to go down there and look at all their students efforts also later this month I'll be taking a Brown Act course to make sure I can hone in on those skills to uh, stay compliant with the law <laughs> everything's got to be legal matter right and then um, we've been ex invited as a board um, to the Riverside County School Board and Center San Bernardino County School Board meeting at the end of the month um, I think that's all I have planned at this point Thank you. 
Thank you, Mrs. Regal. Mrs. Chart. Um, okay, I sit, I sit on the CTE committee and um, Riverside City College is having a career and technical education uh, division-wide advisory committee meeting with breakout sessions on Wednesday night. I'm planning to attend that at the Bradshaw building. Um, I don't know what to expect, but I hope to pick up some information for our uh, on perhaps ways they have been able to get the workforce out. We do have some some of our ROP teachers also work at RCC, so they may already have some ways that, that we can tie our students in, get them jobs, get them out into the workforce, or help them uh, take the courses that they need at Riverside City College or at Rubido on our campus. I don't know what we have in our pathways um, that is on our campus. I think they're mostly academic. Um, classes but I will be checking into that also um, I will be going to the SoCal Fair on Wednesday because I'm going to see the pigs um, and uh, my granddaughter is has raised one she raised one last year and sold it so she had to have one to replace that one so she had another one this year his name is Bruce and she sent out a flyer like this to people uh, to ask them to bid and Bruce um, they were they took the kids out today from Rubino and I'm assuming Herpa Valley and I'm sure Austin I got a letter from Austin too and I'm sure he weighed in um, his sheep her pig um, when she got it weighed about maybe 175 185 I think when she got it and she's had it for four months and he weighed in today at 276 and the top the cap is 280 so he's just almost too big to be there <laughs> but he's going to bring in a hefty profit for the FFA. She gets her money back, and then the everything over that that she has spent on her pig and all the kids the same way goes back into the pool to help the other kids pay for some of theirs that maybe didn't get the the amount that they wanted for their sheep or goat or cow or um, or pig. So she's very excited about it, and um, she's looking forward to inviting people. She's trying they're trying to pro propose or invite people and so I'm inviting you with Mrs. Regal to see both of our groups. Our, I don't think we have anybody from Patriot but I think some of the kids from Patriot might belong to the 4-H and they participate in these fairs also because I know I've seen some kids in, that are in our district that do participate in those but it, it, just to go out and support them all. I mean they're, they're in competition against each other and against some other schools um, or other organizations, other FFA organizations but the FFA program is an outstanding program and I never realized that until I got on the board I did not realize what it actually entailed. These kids learn how there's all a several different aspects of what they learn and they have come in, um, they do learn how to debate, they learn how to speak. Um, my granddaughter was quite shy when she got into this, I mean she just would kind of climb up but she's come out of her shell now and she's doing much better on being able to talk they have to present their their beef and they have or their cow or their pig sheep whatever they have they have to tell about it they can't just hand them a paper and say this is about it so they really have to be able to face the public and, and talk to them so it's a great learning experience so they're not just out there having fun at the fair they are working and learning a lot so um, and I then I will be going to um, the end of the month we'll be going to the uh, annual uh, meeting between the San Bernardino and Riverside um, uh, school boards associations. I think that's all I have and I'll be actually going to the football games too as I always do. Um, thank you very much that's all I have. Thank you Mrs. Chard. Mrs. Bradford. My committee meeting for this month was best of the best getting to read what our staff members and employees say about each other is so exciting to see the respect, collegiality, and collaboration between persons and in interdepartments, intradepartments. It's just nice to see all of this talent wrapped up for the benefit of our students. I'm surprised nobody's mentioned what happens this Saturday? Picnic. Okay, thank you. I'm I'm I signed up for the bounce house, I think. So come on down and uh, let's all have a lot of fun. The uh, after 
what the fun, the real fun I'm having this week, though, is day after tomorrow, Dan Olguin at uh, Camino invited me to come read to his class. And so I said I would, being a professional writer, I have some child-appropriate stories that I've written. So he's really excited about encouraging the children in their own creativity and uh, having the interest in their lives being shown by persons in leadership positions in the district. So he was, uh, he, he came up to me at uh, JVHS graduation and I was just so pleased. And Mr. Lewis, I also put down your name if you hadn't noticed that. So if you're wondering where that came from, it, I'll, I'll uh, confess. It's going to be fun. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bradford. Ms. Ortega. Thank you. Um, we have a few events coming up uh, this week. I, I believe I was uh, double checking the dates uh, for CT Advisory Committee dinner um, and, and RCC. They've uh, invited us as well. So we'll, it'll be nice to <clears throat> to be back. I was um, one of their keynote speakers for an event they, they hold for about 300 um, young students, uh, women, to introduce them to other um, other opportunities for work in the workforce. So. Um, it will be nice to, to to revisit some friends there in RCC. Um, also, uh, Career Day in Indian Hills this month as well. Um, um, Trustee uh, Chard and I will, will be attending that. Um, this Friday, Flaybob Airport or um, the gym, uh, their CrossFit has um, been inviting me for a while, so I'll make some time to go there. They they have the the 100 mile club for the kids there, um, so I promise them I'll put my shoes on and my running shoes and not run so much, but I'll do my best. <laughs> um, and or walk, yes. Thank you, thank you. That's Friday. For this Friday, yeah, and Flay Bob, yeah. I'll, I'll send you all the info. I think they said 5, 5 p.m. at Flay Bob, uh huh. And State of the District for uh, Riverside Unified School District 2, I'll be attending that, along with um, one of our graduates actually from here, um, Dr. Farouk, is um, appointed as the, let me see. I had to hear the California, I don't want to mess up, workforce, and they're recognizing him um, this month at the, at the end of the month um, in Riverside and San Bernardino County Board of Supervisors are recognizing him. So um, we I personally got invited by him um, as well, and he, he's a graduate of of uh, Harupa, Harupa Valley High School, so it's nice to, to see what you know our students are, are doing. and. This is a big appointment because it's by the governor, so it'll be nice to, to do that as well. Um, root cause, uh, social, uh, social determinants of health. Uh, what is determining our health of our students? Uh, in, uh, again, at a very young age, I'll be in a conference also by the end of this month, no, mid-month. Mid um, this, uh, I think it's on a Sunday. I also got invited to speak um, because once I learned about social determinants of health, and, and th this is a study that was done in here in San Diego and in, in Kaiser, Kaiser did this study on what is determining the health of our students and in, in, in community in, in general. And you will be very surprised how education plays a big role in the health of, of our students. So I think we, and doc, um, Dr. Um, Jose Campos is doing an, a tremendous work on that because he sees he sees the connection with health and education. So I'll be excited to, to be a speaker there. I um, want to thank Ms. Echols for the invitation for, I think it's important too for us to hear out what teachers, um, it, it, it happened again in this past conference that I went to, it's we're making, we're creating policy and if we don't invite those or we don't hear out from those that will be in a, that these policies will be affecting, I think it, it shifts the way that I see things and, and thank you for the invitation, thank you for, for uh, uh, presenting that as well today. So I'll look forward to, to meeting with you um, and your members. Um, 
Also, I forgot to mention the CLSBA conference. What had happened is that um, after one of the dinners, I met, and again, not by coincidence, I met um, one of the members that came, so you might know him, um, Elliot. He had just came to uh, evaluate our Golden Bell um, for our school, so he put a face to to our district. So um, I have high hopes that that we'll get that. And and he was surprised because whoever did the tour, he re he recalled that we have we have them there, and you know. So okay, thank you. <laughs> um, he you he showed him, so he was very impressed by our programs, and and he's a board member from Brawley, so he he had never even heard of Harupa, so um, amazing work, thank you, thank you for for doing that. Um, and then also, it was my first time as a board member uh, in uh, CLSBA. I, I serve as their treasurer, and it's the first time in the record of of the association where we're granted a hundred thousand um, dollars. And it was a big, a big deal for for the association that we um, will be able to continue to do the work. And, and the title of the conference, or the theme of the conference, um, was advancing the new Latino majority. That these these populations are not minority anymore. And how are how are um, school districts and law being affected by it? So the panel with uh, with Jose Medina, Assembly Member Jose Medina, he led that panel, and it was just man incredible it, amazing what he's doing in in writing bills and again what we always talk about if we're sitting down and having um, these conversations with individuals so it's hitting in a local in a state level and I'm always having those conversations with with our our, our people who represent us and um, and I wasn't able to make it but also we had got invited to a barbecue with uh, 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 Congressman Ticano, so I'll look forward to, to meeting him um, in the future as well because I just sat down with uh, our assemblywoman Sabrina Cervantes and, and was talking to her. Uh, she's pregnant with three babies and triplets, she's having triplets, so we didn't have coffee, we had tea um, in Starbucks and um, we were talking about how we, our district, are starting since you know um since babies since even before babies we're starting home visiting programs um again with jose campos um in our community so um it was really nice to sit down with her and and, and share a little bit about my story because that's how i started uh my work as a community health worker here uh, as a promotora working with pregnant moms so she didn't know that about my story so she said okay um she's uh, willing to to listen and to you know create opportunities since uh before babies uh, are born um, like we are doing here in our district um I also got invited to speak as a panelist in the Census 2020 in, in Los Angeles. And this was a national event that a lot of states were there. And they were, uh, they, they had a different presentation for um, nonprofits and then what school districts or, um, because there was also city, city um, officials there. So what we are doing as a city and again as, as a school, as a school to impact um, and create those safety, uh, the safe places for, for individuals to, to participate in the Census 2020 and how we can collaborate with other community, community organizations. So that was really interesting to be part of that. And I brought all my my trustee members a goodie bag, so I'll have to I'll have to give that to you guys after. And I think that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ortega. Uh, just a couple things. I, I got a chance to go to Rubino High School and have a tour of the farm there at FFA. I didn't realize it was 10 acres. It's huge, and uh, I really admire those kids because it takes a lot of work especially to clean up those areas, you know. So I just get, I'm gonna be at, on, on Saturday, I'll be at the family picnic, uh, working the petting farm or whatever. And so that's nothing compared to the real stuff. Uh, but I did have a good time. Miss V and, and Miss Finnicum gave me a tour there. And so appreciate their time. And I've heard that the family picnic, uh, we have an estimated 1,250 people that have RSVP'd. So it's gonna be huge. And so looking forward to that. It's a great effort. Uh, thanks to all the volunteers. I know a lot of volunteers are here today.
and um, and there are many more. So finally, I just wanted to, I mean, as I've listened to my, my colleagues on the board here today uh, to speak, I, I just, um, I'm so proud to serve with all of you. I think we all have a great uh, unity about us. You know, we we want to do what's best for for students, and and uh, each of us is involved, and each of you is involved in so many different areas that uh, that, I'm, that I'm really proud to, to sit here and serve with with the four of you. And so, I just want to thank you for that, and also administration, of course, and the staff. You know, this is a team, and I think we're. We're doing a great job, I think. Mr. Deshaun, any final comments? I have nothing to add. Thank you all for your great work. All right. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>